I'm your host, Dr. Jeff Brown, with your Emerge Medical Podcast with my co-host, Dr. Jeff Cole. I'm very excited about the group that we've got uh, to interview today. This is the executive team from Dysgenics. This is a clinical stage biopharma company developing an allergenic injectable disc cell therapy for lumbar degenerative disc disease. Uh, We're joined by Dr. Kevin Foley, inventor of multiple patents that have revolutionized interventional spine care. His devices are used globally to improve patients' lives. He's currently the chairman of the board at Sims Murphy's Clinic in Memphis, where he practices neurosurgery. We're also joined by Flag Flanagan. Flag is the CEO uh, with over 30 years of experience in the medical device field. We're also joined by Bob Winilak, very skilled medical device and biologics executive with over 30 years in the orthopedic spine market. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Flag to give us a brief overview of their pitch deck, and then we're going to go through with some pointed questions. Jeff, thank you so much uh, for having us on today. Uh, we we really are excited about where we are. Uh, as as uh, you know, Dysgenics is a clinical stage biopharma company developing allogeneic uh, injectable disc cell therapy for lumbar degenerative disc disease in the mild to moderate area. We we really we believe we have a target population in this country of 2.5 million people annually that we can treat with an injection in a treatment room of this cell therapy. The cell therapy has demonstrated a regenerative capacity and potential to treat underlying pathophysiology of DDD, both disc architecture and inflammation. We did we were granted an RMAT, Regenerative Medicine Advanced Therapy designation recently based on this one-two data, which Dr. Foley will discuss, and a fast track designation in 2019 based on the preclinical animal studies we did using human cells. We have a scalable built-for-purpose allogeneic manufacturing facility based in Salt Lake City, Utah. We have 33 issued patents, uh, 26 pending, with many, many trade secret protections around our manufacturing and our know-how. We have de-risked the clinical, the clinical pathway so far, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, pivotal phase three trial expected to target pain and disability. Um, you can see that, uh, Jeff, we've had a very good uh, history in terms of, of, of basically building our value and hitting our milestones uh, when we, from the time we were founded in 2008 through translational science preclinical studies. And then you can see the rounds of funding along the way with the USIND investigational new drug allowance uh, by the FDA, June of 2019, followed by a CTN, which is similar uh, drug allowance by Japan, with this fast track designation, and then the last patient enrolled in the U.S. study with another round of funding to build out the manufacturing facility, with the last patient being enrolled in Japan uh, in April of 2021, where we then uh, received positive U.S. interim data and then at 52 weeks, and then at 78 weeks, and then the full two-year data with the FDA granting us this RMAT designation. In the U.S., uh, we work through the FDA, the biologic branch, following a biologic license application pathway, and these are for various biologic drugs similar to Humira, Trimphia, and other biologics. In Japan, we are following the pathway for regenerative medical products, and uh, We really are hopeful there uh, at the possibility of a conditional marketing approval, possibly uh, by the end of this year. We are seeking to raise a total of 95 to 125 million in our Series D round of funding. We've raised 71 million to date. We're raising 40 to 50 million currently in a convertible note to that Series D. We have $30 uh, million of existing demand from the insiders on the convertible note now. So we're trying to fill out the rest of that. Uh, We have a recent big four uh, accounting firm valuation uh, that is uh, very, very good. It's it's, uh, into the low billions of dollar valuation today. So we're very excited about where we are there. And we believe that we can be a potential blockbuster drug by year three of commercialization. That would be with revenue in excess of a billion dollars. I'd love to run through really the, just the, the main topics and uh, Jeff Brown and I will kind of tag team back and forth, try to keep us on task. And, and again, we can, we can edit this down. Let's get going. What, what, uh, 
who would like to tackle just the the main um, discussion of the problem itself, low back pain and, and how much of, a, of an issue that is in the United States and abroad. So, so I, I can speak to that, Jeff. Um, chronic low back pain is an incredibly common problem. Um, you know, uh, uh, there's a there's a uh, an incidence lifetime of of over eighty percent. Uh, uh, back pain is the uh, uh, second most common reason patients visit a physician. Uh, it's the the primary cause of lost work days. And although there are a variety of causes for the back pain, degenerative disc disease turn, terms, turns out to be the most common cause. We spend as a society over a hundred billion dollars a year in the U.S. treating this entity, and, and we don't do a very good job of it. We do not have a treatment for degenerative disc disease or DDD that addresses the basic underlying pathology and leads to any biologic repair of those discs. And can you talk about what type of I know you said this is a very big problem, but if one of you could answer what you feel like the total market size would be, like what's your total addressable market, both U.S., domestically and worldwide? So there's been a great patient, a uh, great paper published in 2017 by Ravendra et al., where they looked at the incidence of lumbar back pain. It affects a quarter billion patients around the world. Uh, in 16 million patients in North America are affected annually by an incidence of low back pain. And we've done a lot of uh, a, a lot of metadata around the, the Revendra paper and other papers. And, and we really distilled down sort of that modified Furman three to seven that Kevin mentioned to these various patients where we had a modified Furman four was the average uh, patient in our study. And, and we've identified 2.5 million patients annually that conceivably we could serve with an injection in a treatment room utilizing a C-arm of IDCT. We really do believe there is, is this evidence that we are regenerating the disc from the inside out while seeing these dramatic reductions in pain, improvement in ODI and increase in quality of life. It's substantiated by the disc volume increases we saw. That's fantastic. Dr. Foley, what, what can you say about the uh, current standard of care and uh, where, where you feel that uh, this company is going to disrupt? So we're, we'll continue to use exercise programs and therapy and manipulation and uh, various medications, Jeff, for patients who present with uh, acute simple low back pain. It's, it's, it's when the problem persists and doesn't respond to the, the typical non-operative interventions that, that, that we need something better. And for those patients right now, th their options are limited. Uh, they, they can have a fusion, uh, which as you know, basically involves getting rid of the disc, replacing it with bone, placing some kind of hardware in the spine, uh, to, to help that fusion heal. Um, and then we can never undo that fusion. So for patients with degenerative disc disease, for example, I personally don't like to do fusions uh, because I'm taking away the function of their disc and putting stress on the adjacent level, right? That we know over time that a certain number of those patients are going to have issues at the levels next door be, be, because of because of that intervention. And that's not to say that that all fusion is bad. It isn't. When you have true instability of your spine, uh, you know, when the, 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 the bones are moving vis-a-vis uh, -vis each other, fusion is the right thing to do. So I'm not saying fusion will go away. Fusion, fusion will stay with us. I just think that the fusions that are done for disc degeneration alone are 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 going to diminish in number with 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 a treatment that can directly affect the underlying biologic problem with those discs. 
So I, I believe that this intervention will, will displace some of the, the more aggressive surgeries that are done now uh, to, to treat the patients who haven't responded to, to non-operative measures. I also think because of the durability we're seeing with this treatment, again, at least two-year responses to a single shot, if, if not longer, I think this is going to turn out to be really, really cost-effective for the whole system. Not only a good thing for patients, but a good thing for the healthcare system. Having said that, speak to your solution and particularly uh, patents and where you are in terms of FDA clearance and the science of what Dysgenics is bringing to the market. So I'll go ahead and touch on that. So patents, um, multiple patent fa family, 26 issued. We have around 30 in play and, and multiple fa families. And Flag touched on this earlier here, but you know our initial product is for the lumbar indication, but our IP covers the approach as well as the methods and then the derivatives of use for this here. And we talked earlier about how, you know, scalable and how these cells can be differentiated into different therapeutic outputs in here. And then we further, you know, expand our IP to cover the process improvements for the commercial scale that Flag touched on earlier in there. So we built up this tremendous, um, you know, IP portfolio. And then even if we handed someone a patent with, with all the trade secrets, to make something like this as a uh, GMP compliant product, you couldn't do it. There, there's so much technology and R&D that went into being able to produce this as a drug product with these types of therapeutic outputs, you know, took us years to do. So we're very proud of where we are um, with that. But once again, the, the novelty of the approach is really being able to produce a tissue specific progenitor shell from this tissue that gives it the unique properties to be able to go into the center of disc, put out extracellular matrix, and literally rebuild the disc from the inside out at the same time, you know, giving out immune modulatory signals to treat the short-term pain and inflammation going on, really gives the special properties to these cells. It, it, it's very unique, uh, Jeff, from any other product that's out there in terms of the cell itself. Uh, we do have IP, existing IP out to 42. That's 2042. So we, we're in a good way. Uh, obviously, we've done, you know, almost 13 years worth of basic science, pre-clinical work uh, with 13 to 14 different animal studies along the way, which everybody else is going to have to do to follow on. Then they're going to have to do the clinical work in a phase one, phase two, and then a phase three. Um we, which, which again, can be another seven to 10 year pathway. We've seemed to uh, advance it a little bit more here from an accelerated standpoint, we hope. So we feel like we're in a very, very good position, uh, especially around the fast track and the RMAP to move forward. We, we've just got to get through with the IDCT first and uh, then then continue to grow our business to, to, to really help a lot of people. And, and you know, that's been... Uh, Kevin's, Bob's, and my my mission uh, from the very beginning. And it really is about if you take care of the patient and if you're doing the right thing by the patient, everything else tends to take care of itself. How about business model and go-to-market strategy? It's, it's, it's exciting that uh, that you're coming out of the lab and we can, can yeah. talk about the next steps. I'd love to hear. Yeah, so, so the next step is, is this pivotal phase three trial that we'll do. And, and this is a much larger patient population. We're going to look at both single and multi-level uh, opportunities to serve patients. Uh, and we anticipate, anticipate from a commercial standpoint that we will uh, set up a, a pharmaceutical drug model with a direct sales force. And we will also do a lot of direct uh, to patient marketing around, you know, and, and educating the patient with lumbar disc disease about our product and how it might work. And then we we originally or, or initially want to start out uh, u utilizing centers that, that really are integrated spine centers that handle the whole episode of care. And uh, we, we think that's the, one of the ways that uh, we can start this out right. So there's a very good discipline about patient selection in this modified Furman three to seven. 
and uh, move this forward and expand it into other aspects of, of the spine, possibly around cervical, possibly around adjacent level disease. So we think we can expand uh, you know, up and down the spine for, for various uh, uh, episodes where we can interdict along the way in the spine, but we also believe that we can expand with another cell around the musculoskeletal system and then possibly other cells in the future. Do you have some preliminary revenue forecasts? Uh, we do. Uh, after commercialization, we buy, we believe by year three, we'll be tracking uh, revenue uh, to a billion dollars to a blockbuster status. That's a blockbuster drug is known as a drug that does a billion dollars in revenue annually. We think that the uh, that by year three, we'll, we'll be ramping to that billion dollar revenue possibility. Uh, going forward, if we if we do see and and get the labeling that we believe the phase one two data suggest in the high dose patient, you know this this started really in earnest in two thousand and seven. So for a lot of us here, you know it's it's been a journey, but it's been one of passion and love for for what we can do prospectively to patients, like we've been talking about. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I'll say something else. Uh, Jeff, Jeff and Jeff, you know, the, and the graphs don't quite bring this out, but the amount of change in these very symptomatic patients in the trial was impressive. And one of the things I set the flag, and when we were first looking at the two-year data is, my God, these patients are doing as well as someone who has a really well-done fusion and does really, really well. In other words, right. it's a darn shot and you're seeing outcomes that are remarkable. So, you know, it's very encouraging data. We're very excited. Uh, the FDA was certainly excited in that they granted a regenerative medicine uh, advanced therapy designation to us. And, and they really are helping and, and they, they are very enthusiastic, but they will not hedge one iota on the rigor, which is, and that's up to us and we get it. And uh, we believe that we've, uh, put together a, a very good uh, pivotal phase three plan for the FDA. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, continuing our discussions there. You know, talking with multiple founders of companies, I've learned that a red flag is when they continually talk about an exit or an exit strategy, right? Yeah. And when I talk to each of you about what you're trying to do, the overwhelming mission is to make lives better. Period. And not only is that just refreshing to hear from a clinical care or just a human perspective, that ultimately becomes the the founders that drive the success. But in a, in a succinct manner, what's the marketing strategy here, Bob? So we, we spent time putting together a commercialization plan. I, I think a lot of it ties right into our, our pivotal study strategy is that the, the heart of treating patients is partnering with the appropriate treatment centers out there. So that's the heart of it. So ones that are integrated spine practices that tie in the surgical plus the interventional where we can channel in patients where they're going to be appropriately screened and injected per what the labeling of the product will be. This will be tied into, you know, careful selection in each market area with pharma-based advertising where we're going to, you know, create awareness for the patients and be able to channel them into the treatment centers, working closely with the payers and all the different tiers of, of, of payment uh, across the market to, you know, get this therapy approved so we can treat you know, this vast universe of, of patients who are suffering from this. I know there are factors out of your control, but uh, what's your best guess on uh, going to market? So we're very hopeful uh, in the U.S. that we can go to market within three years. Uh, it, we, we're going to have to do a, a, a very good job on our, on our phase three trial to get through that. Uh, we are looking at uh, some uh, this this whole possibility of a conditional marketing approval in Japan, and we are looking at uh, other opportunities outside the U.S. where we could set up a patient registry. I'll summarize it for a layperson. You tell me if I've got this right, but you've got a product that decreases pain, decreases inflammation, increases disc architecture. It's non-immunogenic, so you can't have a, a allergic. Not, 
an, a, a, like an organ rejection type process. Yes. So there's no risk of tumor growth. You've got, and this isn't a claim, this is what we think, both clinically, radiographic, and in, at least in animals, histological evidence for efficacy for a problem that affects millions of people yearly. Yeah, we, we think we have something very interesting here, Jeff. I mean, and, and, sign and, me and, up. And very, and very useful, <laughs> because as you know, there's just there's just not a good answer for these folks. It's it's a, a labor of love to help. You know, it's our it's our opportunity to literally help millions of people. Kevin Kevin's already done that, being the father of minimally invasive spine fusion. I think his reach is, has 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 uh, uh, reached out to that many people, and uh, I think it, it, he's going to do it again together with us. We're we're going to do it together, uh, where we literally can help millions of people around the world. Kevin, thanks so much. You. I, rarely do you meet people with the mat, the the match of humility and clinical competence and skill that you have, brother. You're just great to the world, and you, you you never cease to amaze me how humble you are despite your accomplishments. And I really thank you for your time. I hope that this broadcast will uh, bring you guys some the investors that you need to move forward, and also expose the product that you're bringing to to potential users of it. And uh, and help a lot of people. So thank you for joining us. I'm Jeff Brown with your Merge Medical Podcast uh, and with my host, Dr. Jeff Cole. Thank you for the executive team from Dysgenics for joining us today.